CSS has a brand new feature coming very soon called Style Queries. Uh, it's like right around the corner, 88%. We're just waiting on Firefox and then we're ready to rock and roll. Here's the thing. I've watched other creators try to teach style queries. They always use some outlandish example. I don't think it makes learning very easy. I don't think it's practical. I don't think you'll ever use the examples that they're showing you. I have an immediate and very practical example that I think will make it easy for you to understand and that you will absolutely implement on every website going forwards, especially if they're a dark website. Let me show you this, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen. I am working on the Etch website. Um, it's actually done. This is a staging site. I'm just showing you how I approach this. And this is a dark website, which means every like piece of text essentially is programmed to be light by default. Because if everything's gonna be dark by default, I want the foreground to be light by default. Problem is when you design a light section and all of your content is light by default, we need a way to change this. Now in the past, what we would do, we would do like a data attribute or something like that. But that requires DOM manipulation. You have to add the data attribute into the HTML. So you have to kind of split the context of your work. Instead of just writing CSS, which that you're, you're handling styling, you should just be writing CSS. Handling styling shouldn't require changes to the HTML. And with style queries, it doesn't. With style queries, you can do everything you want to do in the CSS. I'm gonna show you how it's done, okay? So I have this thing called a letter, and it's because it looks like a letter, like a, like a handwritten letter almost, but it's not handwritten. Um, and what I wanna do is I want to, I wanna handle this styling challenge with pure CSS. Now you are probably familiar with tokens and variables in CSS, right? I'm gonna create one called surface. And I'm gonna say that the surface is light. Now I'm not gonna use this token anywhere in this code. That's what you would normally do with a token, right? You're familiar with tokens. You, you mean like I used content with, okay? Here's surface. I'm not gonna do anything with it in this code right here. What I'm doing is I'm just establishing that the surface, the background, the sur I just use surface. You can use whatever you want. You don't have to, the name doesn't matter. The surface of this is light. And then I can go create a new set of instructions based on that fact. Let me show you how to do this, okay? So I'm gonna open ACSS because this is where I put all my global CSS. I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna say style queries. And I'm gonna say at, and I can actually probably zoom in here so you guys, no, it won't let me zoom in. Okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm, hopefully you guys can see. I'm just gonna write it, I'll go nice and slow, I'll explain it as I go. Style queries are part of the container query system in CSS. So you start by writing container, and then you're gonna write style, and it's treated like a function. So you do open parentheses, close parentheses, and then your brackets, and you're gonna place your styles in here. Now what this style query allows me to do is it allows me to check for this token right here, and it also lets me check the value. So I'm essentially saying, hey, is there a container that has this property right here, and does that property have this value right here? That's crazy, because like it'll look at the entire website and go, oh yeah, I found that, Surface Lite, it's right here, I found one, okay? And when it finds one, it'll do whatever you tell it to do. So for example, I want this paragraph text. So I'm gonna say is P and I'm just growing. You don't really have to use is like I could do, I could do this if I wanted to, okay? And I'm gonna say color text dark muted, which is me, that's a, that's a variable I already have programmed that makes, that gives me my muted dark text, okay? So the minute I wrap that, look what happens. This comes to life, okay? It's finding this variable and this value in my letter and it's doing this. It's changing the paragraph to text dark muted. Now I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna see, uh-oh, it didn't quite grab my list items. So what I'm gonna do is go comma li. And now it's gonna grab and bring my list items into that instruction as well. Uh-oh, look at this, I've got a heading. Now I don't want my headings to be text dark muted, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna come down here and I wanna say h1, h2, h3, and I wanna say color, those are gonna be text dark. 
and look at this, it fixes all of my headings. Now I see a link down here. I'm gonna say, okay, my links, and now I know links are styled with tokens already. So I'm gonna say link color, and I'm gonna say primary dark. So instead of primary, I want it to be primary dark because that's gonna aid my contrast ratio here. Now I'm noticing on hover, that's not good, that's too light. So I'm gonna say link color hover is primary semi-dark, and now my hover is fixed as well. So now I've created this situation. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Let's look again what happened. We used a container query to check the style to see if the surface is light. And if the surface is light, we're doing these things. And what that allows me to do, check this out. With one little token declaration, I go from problem. Now, now keep in mind, it's not just letter. Like you're, you're probably wondering, Kevin, why don't you just style, put those rules on the letter class? Well, there's gonna be multiple light areas of my website that are not letters. So yeah, you could just put the styles in letter, but then when you get to another area that's light where the surface is light, but it's not a letter, you're gonna have to redeclare those again. And then again, and again, and however many times it happens where it's not a letter or this kind of card or whatever, you're gonna have to redeclare those styles. Then you're gonna have different instruction sets floating around that you don't have global control over, or, or, you can use a style query and you can create this concept called surface light, where if I come down here and I'm writing my letter and I go, yeah, I'm doing all this crazy stuff on letter, but I also just wanted to say surface light and it just comes to life with your light instructions. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. By the way, this is just one way to use style queries. There's a lot of additional ways. There's more functionality even coming to style queries. I will keep you completely up to date on them. I will teach you everything you need to know about style queries if, if you are subscribed to this channel, if you like and comment on this video. I, I know who does, okay? I know who, do. you will be excluded from the algorithm. I'm just, I, I don't know, whatever. Let's just, let's all be friends. Let's just subscribe, let's like, let's comment, let's, don't make me, make these outlandish uh, uh, threats, okay? Uh, we're all just trying to have fun here. We're all just trying to learn. So do what you're supposed to do. The content's free. Do what you're supposed to do. Like, comment, subscribe, okay? And I promise I will keep you on the Style Query tra uh, train. I will teach you everything you need to know outside of that as well. Page Building 101, in fact, is coming back very, very, very soon, 2.0. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic. I'm just rambling at this point. So I'm gonna shut off the video and I will see you guys again very, very, very soon.